here's a pickle for you. University degrees require you to think critically when completing assignments, but they don't actually teach you how to think and write critically. We as students don't know what we don't know. So a lot of us spend those first few months or maybe years in our undergraduate degree completing assignments without really having a clear grasp on what critical thinking is. Oh my God, I almost died. I'm kind of hoping we'll just manage. I almost died, I was so scared. Critical thinking is just another skill that anybody can develop, but ultimately your academic success lives or dies by your understanding and grasp of critical thinking. So it is crucial, critical even, one might say, that you get confident with this concept sooner rather than later on your academic journey. And that's where this video comes in. So at the end of this video, I want you, friend, to walk away feeling confident that A, you know exactly what critical thinking means, and in a very pragmatic sort of a way, not some sort of lofty, obscure academic explanation. And B, you also know how to begin practicing critical thinking when you are reading and when you are writing. And I promise, if you've ever struggled with the concept of critical thinking before this video, you won't when it's done. So let us begin. Part one, what is critical thinking? Well, let's ask, let's ask, let's ask our Lord, Father and Saviour, shall we? Oh my God, where am I? In this Saturday Night Live sketch, Pedro Pascal's character wakes up in hospital after being in a coma for several months. He immediately begins questioning everyone and everything around him. Why is everybody, who is everybody? Why am I wearing papa? And he takes a skeptic's approach to the information he has been given about his marital status. Why are you calling me honey? His health. And who are you? And his life. Why does he live in Arkansas? Now, is this a tenuous illustration of critical thinking from pop culture that I've included to keep you interested on what can be a very boring topic? Yes, yes it is. Does it make my point? Yes, yes it does. When we think critically about anything, we are essentially just doing what Pedro Pascal's character is doing. It does not mean criticizing. You're tacky and I hate you. In a negative way. Instead, it involves careful thinking about the information that we are being given in a research article, let's say, and thinking, is this true? Why am I in a bad? Why is it true? Let's just put a pin in that. Who would say it isn't true? I don't got anything that's going on right now. It involves taking stock, taking into account whether you think the information that's been given you, to you in this piece of paper is true, valid, and or accurate. And if others in the conversation about this topic other authors on the topic, other critics on the topic also think it's true, valid and accurate. And that's it. That's critical thinking. That is your basic starting point. So just, just stop overthinking. That's it. Why do we do this? Let's use the metaphor of building a house. Okay. My PhD is a house and I'm building it and other people's research are the bricks with which I'm building my house. It's important that I examine every brick that I use and that I consider how it was made, when it was made, did someone else make a better brick? Because by doing this, then I can identify certain limitations of a brick. Maybe I can still use bricks, but maybe maybe not in the foundational part, maybe as like a in a garden path or you know, in a purely decorative manner. I do love a good window seat. I digress. The same concept is true to undergraduate assignments. If you're going to build something as an undergraduate student, an essay, a speech, a research paper and you're going to be using other people's thoughts and words as the bricks for your building then it's just common sense to examine them a little wouldn't you agree this is the one my process i'm assuming you've agreed the ability to successfully think critically requires context yes you need to know as much about the topic as possible there are two ways in which you do this by thinking critically when you read and by showing your ability to think critically when you write. Let's begin with the reading. So the first important step you can take to developing your critical thinking skills is to just read as much as possible about the topic before you develop your own opinion. Let's go back to the brick analogy for a second. The very first brick that I look at when building my house, well, I have nothing to compare it to. So to me, it looks good, right? Well, when you continue to read more, and look at more bricks, more pieces of writing. Eventually, you will see certain strengths and weaknesses emerge in each brick or in each piece of writing. 
And even with those first few pieces of information, the first few articles that you read, you can still undertake certain critical thinking exercises to help you begin flexing that muscle. When I read an article in GoodNotes, for example, I am looking out for the following and I create a summary of my reading based on the following. Who is saying this? When did they say it? And why are they saying it? What is the basis on which they are saying it? Is this basis sound? Basis here perhaps could be what bricks do they use to build their argument? What have others said about this work? What is the particular perspective from which this subject is being approached by this author in general? How does this person's research relate to the research question or problem that I am concerned with? You know, looking for pieces of information that could potentially be answers to those questions. And then I'll type up my summary in Notion. So just start small and gradually, as you become immersed in the literature that you're concerned with, you'll start to see certain themes and trends emerge and, you know, part of the process of developing your critical thinking skills is, is just reading as much as you can. Get a sense of the lay of the land. It, it can be a really annoying chicken and egg situation. I don't know anything, so I'm afraid to start. And I don't know anything because I haven't started. So just take the leap into the literature and work your way from the inside out. Here comes the next very important part of this video, which is applying critical thinking when you are writing. So thinking is intrinsically linked to writing. Writing is thinking made manifest. I remember reading that, that reading without writing is like deciding to bulk in the gym without actually doing the heavy lifting. You're just consuming all of these macros and all of these food with the purpose of bulking, but you don't actually synthesize all those nutrients and all the, that information through the heavy lifting in the gym. You're just gonna store it as extra fat. This metaphor is falling apart around me, but I'm. You, you get what I say. Reading only takes you so far. You have to write then about what it is that you've read in order to really get to the heart of what it is you think about something. But again, a lot of students are quite intimidated about this. They don't know how to write critically. So let me break it down for you in as simple a manner as I can. All paragraphs should be a balance of descriptive writing and critical writing. The first thing you can do when creating a, a critical summary of an article is to first make your point. And your point can be descriptive not critical. A descriptive opening statement in my area of academia might be the first children's folk song collection in Ireland to include sound recordings was from X collection made in 1958. It's factual, it's objective, it's not really opinion, it's just a statement of truth. The second thing you'll want to do is to describe this point in a little bit more detail and again it can be descriptive. Just bulk out the point that you've that you've made in order to lead up to the third part of your paragraph, which will be a critical observation. I think one of the things that scares students is that they don't know how to write critically. I think a lot of students don't know how to separate the two. They don't know how to separate descriptive writing from critical writing, where descriptive writing might be, you know, just hard facts. Critical writing can sound like your own voice, for example, and you can use expressions that convey your viewpoint, like the author the author neglected to consider, has not taken account of, or the author has been limited to or has overestimated. So you're basically at this point offering an opinion. And that opinion is based on your wider knowledge of the topic that you've been reading about. How does this author fit into the broader context? One way to really supercharge your critical writing skills is to actually build a database of all of these phrases. So in my notion, I have a database of phrases that I have identified in articles that I've read that just jumped, up, jumped out to me as good indicators of an author thinking and writing critically. Now, it's not like for the love of God reference and you know, remember plagiarism, that teeny tiny thing in academic writing. And um, you always wanna know where it is you got a source of something, but use these phrases as inspiration for how you will construct your own critical writing sentences. And that, my lovely Palaroos, is the, the end of this video. I hope that you have, at the very least, walked away with a clearer understanding of what critical thinking is and a couple of very tangible ways that you can begin to develop your critical thinking skills through the process of reading and through the process of writing.